Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about John Mulholland, this gentleman right here, John Mulholland. If you never heard of him before, this might be a very interesting video for you. This man was an extremely accomplished magician. He was the editor of the Sphinx, and he had one of the, if not the largest magic collections in the world that is now the foundation of the David Copperfield collection in Las Vegas. We're going to talk about that. John Mulholland, magician, author, publisher, and CIA intelligence operative. Yes, yes. This guy's life could be a major motion picture. Uh, it's, it's, it's fascinating, and, and I'm going to share some of the resources you, for, if you want to take a deeper dive, you can. During his career, he p performed in 42 countries, authored 10 books on magic, and performed at the White House eight times. His 90-minute stage show was carried in two suitcases. He also served as a consultant on conjuring for the Encyclopedia Britannica and for the Webster's Dictionary. He was at one time the only magician listed in Who's Who in America. He was born June 9th, 1898. He crossed over February 25th, 1970 at the age of 71. To me, the closer I get to 71, the younger that seems. Uh, so to me, he was a young man. His actual name is John Wickeiser. John Wickeiser changed his name to John Mulholland. From 1913 to 1915, he's, or 1913, I'm sorry, 1913, he's 15 years of age. He started studying magic. He was a student of John William Sargent, the president of the Society of American Magicians. Now remember, this is New York, <coughs> so it's easier to, to make these kinds of connections there. Educated at Columbia University and College of the City of New York. 1930, he becomes the editor of The Sphinx. And he is the editor from 1930 until 1953. Now, this is very interesting. In 1953, he tells everyone that he's going to have to step down because of his health. In reality, he's recruited by the CIA. And he's a spy. So, so you don't want to tell anybody what he's doing. People that work for the CIA, if you ever know, if you ever know anyone that works for the CIA, they don't tell you what they're doing. If you ask them, they're not comfortable with it. So this this was his situation. He goes to work for the CIA. 1953, left his editorial position at the Sphinx. Mulholland was recruited by Sidney Gottlieb in 1953 for top secret work with the CIA, a project known as MK Ultra. MK Ultra. His assignments included working with billionaires and inventors, cracking codes, and delving into the world of ESP research, experiments with the use of LSD, and writing a manual on deception for use during the Cold War that was called, and I quote, CIA Manual of Trickery and Deception. So when you talk about uh, operatives in the CIA and the trickery and deception they do, he literally wrote the book on it, folks. All right, some operational applications of the art of deception was the second book he wrote for the CIA. Mulholland continued to work for the CIA at least through 1958. So not a long career, but certainly an illustrative career. He passed away in 1970. In 2008, magician Ben Robertson authored this book. It's called John Mulholland's Secret Life, Magician CIA. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's an excellent read if you want a biography on John Mulholland. Um, by the way, magician, if you look at the title page here, the magician, CIA, is kind of whited out. There, there's an outline which you probably can't see, but magician, CIA, and magician is, is whited out. I think that's a very clever uh, technique. Again, the book is um, 
The book is extremely detailed, and it's it's an excellent read, but it, it's uh, it, it's 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 involved, so it's it's a bit of a commitment. So in two thousand eight. Uh, that book is written. Now, some of the other books associated with John Mulholland, you have uh, The Story of Magic, which is what this is. It's not a very thick volume. He goes over the history of magic in this book, and I think it's, you know, I, I think if you're interested in the history of magic, you should read every history you can get your hands on. This one provides a very decent overview. Doesn't take a deep dive in any particular area. Provides a really excellent overview of the history and development of our art. Uh, he also wrote The Girl in the Cage, 1939. The Art of Illusion, 1944. The Early Magic Shows, 1945. The official CIA Manual of Trickery and Deception, 1953. Pla Practical Puppetry in 1961. And of course, John Mulholland's Book of Magic, 1963. <coughs> uh, this is a Dover edition. The Dover editions are really nice because they're not expensive and they hold up pretty well with use. Uh, I will tell you that I have found material in here for my working repertoire and also my carry around or close up or everyday kind of repertoire. You'll find some, some good material in here. I really enjoyed it, so I highly recommend it to you. Now, there's one other thing I want to discuss about John Mulholland, and that is his library. I have notes here. I'm going to read these to you, but it's, it's really important because the Mulholland Library... It, it, it went into the I, I didn't get a whole lot of information on this, but it, it was in the possession of Ricky Jay for a time, and then it went to David Copperfield. Copperfield paid millions, I think, to the tune of two million. I'm not sure how much he paid, but it, it became the foundation of of his massive collection in Las Vegas. Mulholland had one of the largest collections of magic memorabilia and apparatus in the world including almost all of Houdini's paper archive estate that had not been given to the Library of Congress, and a library of over 4,000 books. I'm probably getting close to that. 4,000 books. David Copperfield purchased most of Mulholland's archival magic estate and library, including the entire Houdini archive collection library owned by Mulholland, all of which is now housed in Copperfield's International Museum and Library of the Conjuring Arts located in Las Vegas. Begun in 1991 when Copperfield purchased the Mohoan Library, uh, which contained the world's largest collection of Houdini memorabilia, including Houdini's water torture cell and metamorphosis trunk and uh, the Orson Welles buzzsaw illusion, as well as automata by Robert Houdin. The museum, owned by David Copperfield, is not open to the public. However, tours are by reservations only for colleagues, fellow magicians, serious collectors, and serious uh, historians. How he determines who is serious, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't actually made inquiries myself. It would be interesting to see. Remember, David Copperfield did publish a book on his library. If you don't have it, I, I recommend it to you. I did a video on it earlier. Uh, so folks, that's John Mulholland. I thought you would be interested in, in knowing a little bit about him if you don't already. Uh, again, these books are excellent. This is a, a biography of John Mulholland. This is John Mulholland's book on magic and John Mulholland's history, which is really an excellent overview of the history of magic. Thank you so much for joining me. Please comment down below if you've not, uh, please, please subscribe if you've not done so already. I love your comments. Thank you so much. Have a great day.